What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? Cartes here, move abroad and thrive.com. Man, had a rough few days. Um, Sunday, early Sunday morning, around, I don't know, three, four o'clock in the morning, man, I had to be rushed out to the hospital. I don't, I, I, honestly, I don't remember anything that happened. I do recall waking up um, to go to the bathroom and stumbling around the bathroom. Well, trying to find my way to the bathroom, just stumbling. I, and Kim said I was making all this noise, trying to climb over the bed, which was out of character for me, of course. The way I normally I get out the bed, I just get out my side of the bed and walk around. But I do remember touching the walls and trying to feel my way around and somehow stumbling into the closet, trying to find the bathroom, went to the bathroom, came back out and and I remember Kim saying something to me and she said I was snapping off at her and yelling, <laughs> which was out of out of character for me. And she was like, you were just real irritable and you were just real mean and nasty. And she was like, I went upstairs and so I finally made my way back to the bed, but I didn't put my CPAP machine on. And so of course she said that was strange and she kept trying to talk to me. And I remember her talking to me and I just kept popping off in the mouth. Like, man, leave me alone, y'all And she was saying I was making all these crazy sounds with my mouth and so she went upstairs and got my 21 year old and said man come down here and let me know if your daddy if what he doing is strange because he he tripping and so of course she got down there and um agreed with her i guess and said yeah he need to he need to call 911 so they called 911 and apparently i was mumbling slurring all my words and just and to me when i was talking i do remember parts when I was speaking, um, they was and I remember mumbling, but I can in my brain I can I understood what I was saying, so I, I felt they should understand what I was saying. But I kept repeating myself over and over again because they kept saying "huh," which made me more irritable, and I just got madder and madder. And so anyhow, they ended up calling. She said she could call nine one one. I said, "Don't you call them, folks, man? I'm going to sleep. I ain't going if they come." And so I tried to roll back in the bed and then the rest is a blur. Um, so apparently 911 came and when she called 911, um, they came out and I do remember them being in the room. I remember, like again, I'm, I'm only remembering pieces. They asking me questions, they, I'm still slurring at the mouth. Um, they didn't understand what I was saying and I was just struggling to keep my eyes open and struggling to have enough energy just to talk. And so I do remember them putting me in the gurney, the, you know, the bed that they roll you into the ambulance in. And, and like I said, after that, I don't remember nothing. I do recall a, a, a brief second of seeing the ambulance on the inside, but again, I only remember the trip. I don't remember none of that. And I'm gonna come back and get, you know, give some pointers on what to do um, because there was a few instances um, that need to be addressed on what to do in the event that you have an emergency um, and you're trying to deal with 911, um, you know, just to save some time because minutes matter, you know what I mean? For the record, I want to clear, I want to clear this up. I didn't ask her to make these clips. They just know automatically that in my house, they hear me preach all day long. Everything is content. Everything is content. Everything is content. Your life is content. Everything that happened in your life is content. And so she automatically knew. She already knew. I'm completely gone. She's like, oh, let me get this content for daddy. So shout out to Sky for getting these clips that y'all seeing in this, in, this, in this thread. So anyhow, I, I went to the hospital. They got me to the hospital. Um, and again, I just, I just don't remember. I don't remember nothing. And um, they ran all these tests. Um, they thought at first they suspected that maybe I was having a stroke, um, thought maybe I was having a heart attack, thought I was having some stuff going on like that. But um, fortunately, thank God, um, I was cleared for all of that stuff. So they gave me an MRI. I don't know if it was an MRI or a CAT scan. Um, they gave me that. Um, the, everything checked out with that. They uh, even did a lumbar puncture. I remember that doctor sticking my back like five times before she got it right. I do remember that because it was hurting. 
Uh, but I got, she stuck me in my back five times. They did a lumbar puncture just to rule out any type of infection in my brain um, and whatnot. So that came back clean. They ran all these labs on me. All of my labs came back clean other than, of course, my A1C level, which determines whether or not you have uh, diabetes and stuff. So that was obviously uh, elevated. So that's an issue I deal with back and forth. Um, so that was the only thing that came up in my blood. So they had a neurologist come down. He checked me out, um, said everything was fine, everything was good. And, you know, but man, they ain't been able to figure out what happened. You know what I mean? Because I was gone. Man, I, when I say I was gone, I was gone. I, I don't even remember that day. I don't really remember nothing. You know, um, somehow, you know, time to pay for the bill, of course, you know, because here in Mexico, you go to the doctor, this is an emergency room at the new hospital, Faro. When you go to the hospital, you don't pay your bill, you don't leave. You, get, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I wasn't admitted into the hospitals, never got that far. So, of course, insurance wasn't going to cover that. Um, but we ended up having to pay $2,000 for the whole thing. And I was there from about 4 in the morning to about, hey, how you doing, young lady? Um, I was there to about 4. I got there about 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. And, and I don't think we left till about 2 p.m. Um, and in the emergency room, of course, you know, you paying more money. They charging by the per half hour that you in there, you paying a fee to be in that room, occupying that space. But for so for everything, you know, the total cost was two thousand U.S. dollars. Um, somehow, I managed to be able to to uh, log into my bank account and uh, move some monies around because I keep money separated. Um, in case I lose my card or somebody steals my card, they can't get access to everything. Um, so, so somehow I was able to move monies around and, and Kim uh, paid the bill uh, at the hospital. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm back to about 95%. Uh, today is Tuesday. Like I said, this happened like Saturday night, Saturday, mo Saturday night, Sunday morning. Um, you know, after after midnight Sunday morning, you know what I mean? And for the last two days, so when I got home, I slept all day. I slept all through the day, all through the next morning, because I was just out of it. And then um, yesterday, I slept mostly through the day as well, just rested. And so today is my first day, fully awake, fully alert, um, and pretty much back to 95%, I will say. Um, man, it was rough. I didn't know what was going on. You know, I thought I was dying, you know. But the funny thing about it, I wasn't scared. You know what I mean? Thought I, I thought I was gone. It's just like I lost a block of time, you know. So, man, I just wanted to share that experience with you. But um, I'm all good. Thank you all for the, I sent the message out to our group. Um, our VIP members because we were supposed to be doing a live interview this past Sunday with, with our guest Malika. So I just sent everybody an email out canceling that, um, you know, due to my illness. So thank you all for those well wishes. I appreciate it. Um, you know, and just for the record, we'll be resuming that this Sunday coming up, same time. And uh, but man, it was it was it was rough. So I'm gonna kind of backtrack and kind of give y'all some tips on some things because it matters. Minutes matter, you know. So we live in a provider, and so when you call 911 and you and and they come into your house, you make sure you contact that guard desk. You know the people at the front gate. You gotta th you know here we could just send a message. Like if we order food or something like that, we gotta send a message saying, hey. I'm expecting some food to be delivered to my house today um, in the next 30 to 45 minutes. And so when they come, they'll say, okay, let them in. They either already been checked in. So you got, even they do that with FedEx. Even if FedEx or UPS bring mail to your house, you got to notify them or they ain't letting them in. And so our particular place is pretty strict. So they was at the gate for about three, four minutes going back and forth with the guards trying to figure out you know where they were going so that's just make sure you do it because minutes matter um once the guards accepted and realized that they were coming to you know to the house 
Um, I think they said the ambulance went past the house. Yeah, exactly. And so the guards had to go back and grab him and bring him back to the house. You know what I mean? I don't know how they missed the house. I mean, as soon as you come back, turn around the corner, we like the third house on the on the end, and the and the and the, and the building is numbered. But for whatever reason, they missed that. Um, also, when you call nine one one, because it's the same nine one one number just like we have in the states. When you dial nine one one, you're gonna have to. If you don't speak Spanish, you're gonna have to ask um, the person on the phone, "Can you talk to somebody in English?" And they will generally pass you over to somebody in English. So. There's a few words you probably want to practice. It's, a, it's a, some, some basic terminology you just need to know um, to make that transition a little smoother, you know. How to know, you know, how to ask, can, you, can I talk to somebody in English? You know, learn the Spanish phrases for that. Just learn the basic words for help. Make sure you understand and know what your address is. When you give them your address, you want to be able to say the whole address. You know, Calle, blah, 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 house number, Casa La Casa, uh, Numero, Bank Day, whatever. And then you also want to make sure you give them the right uh, neighborhood or colonia you, you're in. So like if you live in Montes de Ame, you need to specify Montes de Ame because there's a bunch of neighborhoods that have the same street number and same house number, but it's the neighborhoods that, be careful on the video shaking. Um, so, I'm sorry, y'all, my daughter was leaning on the table, they're shaking. Um, so, you got to make sure they're going to the right neighborhood. Otherwise, they'll be 30 miles down the road. Now, I've heard other people say, and Malika was one who said this as well, when she called 911, they um, asked her, I forgot what she said, but some of these places charge money, the 911 services, the ambulance services. But for whatever reason, ours didn't cost anything. But I think she had to pay for her 911, and I think they offered her the opportunity, gave her the opportunity to choose an ambulance service. Um, but in our case, we didn't have to pay. They didn't ask us about any money. We didn't have to pay. And we used the ambulance services before when we were living in Monte de Arme, um, and there was no fee for that. They asked us which hospital we wanted to go to, and Kim said, hey, we, we want to go to Faro, um, you know, and this is something we didn't discuss. But there's some other hospitals like the public hospitals where if you go to the public hospital, and particularly if it's an emergency, you, you don't have to pay. You know what I mean? There's no fee. And so I wasn't fully awake and fully alert um, to tell her to take us to the other hospital. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, cause I, you know, I came back, I, we ended up getting stuck up in there for two or three days. You know, I, I ain't want to have no $20,000 US bill. You know what I mean? I figured in my brain, you can just use my logic. If I'm having an emergency and I can go to the free general public hospital um, and I don't have to pay anything, I'd rather go there and be uncomfortable. Get me, get my behind stable, let me get solid. And then if I need to transfer out, then I'll transfer to another fancy hospital after all the testing, emergency uh, prepared, you know, preparedness that been done. But you know, we didn't discuss that. So in advance, I already know which hospital you want to go to. Have it written down somewhere, or y'all discuss this in advance, so you know where to go. Because the they're they gonna get there, they're gonna ask you where you want to go. From my understanding, and this is just hearsay. A lot of people tend to complain, just, just some reviews that I read online, um, with Star Medical, a lot of folks say, particularly for foreigners, the, the charges are outrageous. Um, they feel they, you know, been charged way more, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, so that's just something to be mindful of. So that's a hospital I wouldn't go to. I know a friend personally who went there and got charged a fortune for being, for being sick there. Um, you know, also, I hear, and I didn't again, because we didn't discuss this, I didn't know. From my understanding, if you are a resident, um, I, I, and I might be saying this wrong, but this is worth verifying and checking out, that you get a different rate than you would if you are a tourist or a foreigner. You know, so I, I'm assuming at some point there could have been a conversation that took place where they say, hey, we're local residents. 
can we get this discount or is there a different fee that we pay as a resident? And so, but we didn't do that again because we didn't discuss it, you know. Although we've been in the hospital before, it's generally me or Kim taking the kids to the hospital or to the emergency room, um, you know, and we, we just never asked. And again, this is new information that I'm just learning about in terms of the discount. So make sure you let them know you are a resident. You might qualify, the bill might be cheaper. I'm in fact, I'm gonna see if we can call back and, and let them know, and perhaps we can still qualify for the discount. But my payment, our bill was $2,000 for all of that in the emergency room. And I was in there for about 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, for about six to seven hours. We were in there running all sorts of tests, EKGs, I forgot to say that, EEGs, everything. $2,000, which I ain't complaining about that. Um, Cause that bill could have easily been 20, 30, 40,000 in the US. I mean, CAT scans on an emergency basis or MRIs on an emergency basis is gonna be outrageous through the roof. And then to see all the doctors, you know what I mean? The specialists, the neurologists, the radiologists, um, the emergency room doc, um, and all of that stuff. You know, so, and again, learn some basic words so you can communicate that you need somebody who speaks English. Um, fortunately, many of the doctors that was in the hospital, the doctors spoke English, right? Yeah, most of them. So most of the doctors in the hospital, again, when this was at Faro, which is the newer hospital in the north side of Medina, uh, most of the doctors that came in, they all, for the most part, spoke English. Um, and again, when calling 911, if you can't communicate, get somebody else on the phone with you on three-way who speaks English or who speaks Spanish to see if they can help you out with the phone call. I'm just looking through my notes here. And again, the number is 911. So if you need to call 911, Make sure you let them folks at the guard know that you got an emergency and to let the ambulance through so that you can get in. And like I say, if here in the healthcare system, you gotta pay. So for us this particular time, most of the time they be asking for money up front. They'll try to anticipate the cost and they ask for the money up front. But in this case, they allowed me to go through complete treatment, you know, while they were trying to diagnose things. And at the end, before it was time to go, that's when they asked for the money. So try to have some emergency funds on hand um, for emergencies. And again, try and go to some of these public hospitals, man, because the bill, if you do have to pay, it's gonna be significantly cheaper than these private hospitals. These private hospitals are for profit business. They have business to make money. They're not out here giving free health care and whatnot. Um, so try to have some emergency funds, a credit card, we pay with a debit card. Um, you know, some hospitals are going to be cheaper than others, so investigate that. Know ahead of time which hospital you're going to go to um, in the event of an emergency so there's no confusion on where to go um, in a moment of distress. Um, anything else helpful from, from your experience? Anything else, Cook? Uh, yeah, yeah, I brought that up. Anything else, Ailey? All right, I'm just asking them. It's the same just in the States. It's just the language barrier, you know. All right, so I'm just asking them if there's anything else I should add. Um, you know, but I will say the staff was very friendly. Um, they were very patient. Um, like I said, I remember bits and pieces and stuff like that. Oh, oh, always when you get ready to check out. Oh, yeah, check when you get ready to check out that hospital, because I can say $2,000, you know, I still, it was, while well, it was a good deal, I was still like, ouch. I, even in my state of, 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 of <laughs> I don't know what state I was in, I heard them $2,000, my ears perked up. You know, I was still like, you know, no matter how confused I was, I said, hey, add them jokers for an itemized bill and go down that list and make sure everything that they say on that list is what we got. So she noticed, and Malika mentioned this before, you folks, for whatever reason, don't wanna put gloves on when they, when they checking your blood or just checking you out. They don't wear no gloves. So Kim saw they charge 
a couple of hundred pesos for a box of gloves. And she was like, man, you joking? And none of these jokers had no gloves on. So she went back up, you know, went back and forth with them. And, um, and they, they, uh, they finally took the gloves off. So that, you know, I knocked that bill down by $10. You know what I mean? So check that bill, look at it, because they will print it for you and hand it to you. And you can go right down that itemized list and, and figure out just to make sure you've got everything. Because they charge for every little thing. Um, if they gave you an aspirin, it's all, it's all that paper. You know, it's like, hey man, you think you gave me three aspirins, you only gave me one. So you can go back and forth and dispute that with them. So make sure you ask for that itemized bill. Anything else? That's pretty much it. All right, so I just want to make sure. But I'm all good. Um, man, I'm just happy. Like I told y'all, remember I told y'all last year I've been, I've been focusing on saving my money. Uh, and investing and just doing a better job with money management and becoming more financially li financially literate. You know, this is one of those first times where we got to the hospital, I wasn't too nervous or scared about paying the bill. So I felt good. And so it felt real good walking out of that hospital, giving them a debit card and letting them whack that money right out my debit, my bank account and didn't feel it, didn't hurt. And so I'm like, progress. Making progress, making progress, making progress. You know what I'm saying? You know, so financial literacy is the game plan for me in 2024. Um, you know, like I say, investing is, is going to play a big part of my strategy this year. Um, and I've been learning how to trade, day trade um, with Robert. Um, you know, he has his own course teaching you how to day trade. So. Um, if you're trying to get your finances right, get your monies right, make more money, path of income, um, check out his training on his website. Go to www.slowlifetrading.com. I mean, the guy has a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of information, and I believe this year, 2024, is going to be one of my best years uh, financially, um, solely because I'm trying to fix and repair and correct things I hadn't been doing, I hadn't been saving, I hadn't been investing much of my life. I just, those are just two things I hadn't done. And I can't just let the money sit in the bank. I need that money working and working and making a return and sending me more money. Um, so that's one thing where this year I'm more strategic in that. So I just wanted to share that with you. So check them out because, because of what I've been doing with my finances, it didn't hurt me so bad. Previously, when we was in the emergency room, I'm on here looking for some donations and whatnot. You know what I mean? This was a couple of years, about a year, about almost two years ago when I had my surgery and when Haley was getting sick. So like I say, it feels real good now to be uh, in a better place. And, um, you know, so so thank you. I appreciate you, Robert, um, man, for all for all that you do for, for the community online, for the community of people that are looking to become uh, more financially uh, literate and become more financially um, responsible. And I'm just looking over my notes here. Um, if you have questions, post them down below. Um, I'll answer those um, as I can. I'm also going to post this video inside of our VIP members group. So specifically, if you guys have questions inside the group, I will definitely address your questions in the group. Um, that's part of membership benefits. If you're not part of our membership VIP, I suggest you join. It's very affordable. We're about to increase the price soon. Um, Moveabroadandthrive.com forward slash VIP. Uh, you, we have members in there. Um, there's a section in there called Ask Cartes. So if you have questions about anything related to moving abroad or even starting your own business or whatever, you're able to ask that inside of our VIP area where I personally answer. Um, we also have live events where we interview different people from time to time. And um, we're going to be interviewing Malika. She's been all over the world. Um, Singapore. She's been to uh, Switzerland. She's lived in, she's been to Saudi Arabia, lived in South Korea, lived in Bangkok, Thailand, been to Morocco, been to, uh, I mean, this lady's been all over the world. And if any of the places that I just mentioned, Singapore, Vietnam, um, if any of these places were places you were thinking about moving to, she's the person to ask about that. Um, she's been in these places, lived in these places, 
And during our live interview on this upcoming Sunday, um, you'll be able to talk to her directly, get your questions asked, and get your questions answered, I should say, and, um, and get some feedback from somebody who's been to these places. Um, she just recently moved here to Medina. and live out here in Concal, matter of fact, about two minutes down the street from me. And um, we're gonna be doing a live with her this Sunday. So join the VIP membership, moveabroadandthrive.com forward slash uh, VIP. I'm back to health. Like I said, I'm about 95, 96%. Um, I'm feeling better. I hope to be back out um, getting more content and cranking things up. I got a lot of new stuff coming out in the future and, and very soon for those of you all who wanna learn how to make money, YouTubing or how to make money, blogging, um, I helped a lot of people set up and create courses and all of that stuff. And if this is something that you're interested in, that's something we can definitely help you out with. Um, so I'm going to check my emails over the last three days. I've been out of it, but I'm back. So if you had not gotten a response from me, that's why I've been down and out completely. And uh, so between today and tomorrow, we're going to get all caught up and get back on track. Thank you for watching. Any questions you have, feel free to comment.